you spent all those decades at institutions, two major universities, one major NGO, which are arguably the bastions of a certain form of liberalism in America, deeply secular modern liberalism. And so I wonder if part of the reason why this issue resonates so much with you is some reaction against what you find especially in the academy, that particular form of secular liberalism and that uh, almost recoiling from, from uh, religious or spiritual commitments. Well, I would, I think the causality is a little more complicated than that in, in the sense that I, I did view um, religious commitment and convictions as deeply rooted in communities and with uh, very substantial social ramifications. Um, I also, in, when I was on finishing up my um, higher education, was a period when I think the, the self-confidence of secular liberal intellectuals was at an all-time high. And religion was deemed to be really just a matter of a cultural lag, and it would be not very long before we would all recognize that secular liberalism was the answer rather than, uh, than all of these odd religious movements. And I found that some of my favorite people are those sorts of secular liberals. Uh, I, I, maybe my favorite of all is Derek Bach, who was the president of Harvard then, and seemed to me, I mean, a, a wonderfully principled ethical person, but was pretty dubious about, about religion as having any future. Uh, modified some, I would have to say, when his daughters became very interested in religion, but that, that was, that's a longer and more personal story than I will get into. But so I, I felt strongly that it was important to embrace the value of kind of critical inquiry that Harvard or Rice or Columbia represented, but also to push back against the kind of the presumption that the default worldview that every that the whole world was gravitating to was the kind of secular individualism that the faculty at the university represented, which seemed to me clearly not the case. Yeah, but I I wonder if because um, when people with a deep religious commitment complain about America's secularism, it always strikes me as a little odd because America is such a more religious country than almost any major Western European country. So is it only in the academy where there's this kind of default contempt or disregard for religion? Is that really a problem in American culture more broadly? Well, I, I think it is, to take the first part of that, certainly it is true in the academy, and in part in the academy it has been. I think this is all changing, and that's why I, I'm, I'm engaged with writing about this. But it has been. Uh, true in the academy in part as a reaction against the kind of religiosity that is very much in evidence in, in, in America. But I think if we, if we look at the matter globally, the, the problem with having the default, the presumption that the default truth is, let, let's leave off secular, that it's modern Western individualism, whether secular or religious. For people outside of the United States, it doesn't make that much difference whether it's secular or religious. The problem is the presumption of individualism. And the, that is deeply resented and resisted and op opposed in most of the world, uh, excepting part, part, some parts of Western Europe. And until we recognize how our assumption that individualism, of the sort that's developed in the modern West is going to be acceptable in, we'll take your pick, in Africa or in Asia or in the Middle East. Until we get over that, we are not going to really be able to engage with, with uh, international issues that we're confronting all the time because we are, um, we are unaware of how um, deeply unacceptable our default position is to all those other communities.